Hello, my name is Melissa, and I'm the Information and Resource Specialist for Spinal Cord Injury BC. We've put together a series of webinars to help you understand where your money may come from and really how to get a little bit more. We'll help you find out about the different income sources that are available to you and also ways that you may be able to save a little bit for the future. So today our first slide presentation is about sources of income. The most common source of income is through the provincial government of British Columbia and is Persons with Disabilities Benefits, also known as PWD. I will take you to their website and we'll look a little bit more at what PWD benefits are and how to get them. So this is the brochure from the Ministry of Social Development that explains what you're eligible for as well as how to get it. So PWD that's expected to continue at least two years. So it is for people who have an injury or an illness that would prevent them from working or are born, and they're either born with it or acquire it. So it doesn't matter how your injury came about, if you are found by the provincial government as somebody with a disability who isn't able to complete all of the activities of daily living or require some sort of assistance, th this is where you should start. The PWD benefits are $906 per month for a single person. So you would receive $531.42 for necessities, such as phone, food, things like that, plus $375 more for shelter. If you are a couple, there are, if you're a part of a couple, there are different rates depending on whether or not your partner or spouse is also disabled. So here's a table that shows what the different rates are. So it is, people are categorized. If you, as we talked about singles, couples or two parent families where one person has a disability, then you receive the $906 total. Now if you're a couple where both adults have disabilities, But just a little bit more for shelter, for example, $570, for, because then you would need a two-bedroom. Another significant option is WorkSafe BC. A lot of people aren't aware that this is through the provincial government. These are benefits for if you became injured and subsequently disabled through your work. Persons with Disabilities Benefits and WorkSafe BC Benefits are some of the best sources for other coverage, which we will talk about a little bit later. These are your options, especially WorkSafe BC Benefits. If you have been injured at work, this is your best option. If you have not been injured at work and either were born with the illness or injury or acquired it, PWD Benefits are the best for you. Unfortunately, PWD benefit amount does not increase over time, and it hasn't changed more than $120 since 2001. So we, they do understand that this amount is rather low, and which we will again talk about a little bit later in our series, the amount of rent and food in Vancouver and its suburbs. It is, the rent is a little bit higher than that amount. There are other options for you for help. There is also a family bonus for low-income families, particularly with people with disabilities. Now, the federal government also has sources of income. Many people are encouraged to apply for CPP disability benefits when they become when they acquire spinal cord injury. CPP disability is for people with a permanent disability that prevents them from obtaining gainful employment. They will look at whether or not there's any job you could perform 
based on your education, training, and experience. Now, that only goes on to a certain age, because we do age, unfortunately. And it does change to into old age security benefits or Canada Pension Plan. This is what we contribute to while working. We contribute to our Canada Pension Plan planning for when we get older. So it is for its retirement income for people who worked and contributed. So the amount you receive varies. Old age security is different from that and it's the basic amount for everyone over age 65 who has lived in Canada for more than 10 years. Part of that is also the guaranteed income supplement for people with low income if you did not earn as much through your working career. So for detailed information, we'll go to the Service Canada website because it can be a little bit confusing. So these are the, it, we, this website explains the differences between old age security and Canada Pension Plan. So you can go to the Service Canada website for, to read this detailed information on your own. But it just gives you a little bit of an idea here of what they have. So under old age security, you have the basic pension. Guaranteed people who are, if they are between the age of 60 and 64. So if your spouse is 65, but you are still 63, you would cover for, you would, um, be considered for this allowance if your income is low as well. So here's information on the Canada Pension Plan retirement benefits. Again, this is not the same as Canada Pension Plan disability. So this talks about your retirement pension. Now you are eligible to receive an early pension as of 60, but the amount would be a bit lower. Many people wonder what the benefit of applying for CPP disability is if you're able to receive a few more benefits through provincial disability benefits. The benefit of applying for CPP disability is that the federal government is then aware that you are a disabled person. And as such, you aren't able to contribute as much to Canada Pension Plan, to your retirement savings. You may not be employed for a few years or for the rest of your life due to a disability. They take this into account, and by receiving CPP disability, you do and start contributing to the retirement plan again. So it will allow you to have more money on retirement. As of age 65, your benefit would be higher than if you are not receiving CPP disability. So here are the amounts. We talked about how per PWD benefits are $906. Now, CPP, and CPP disability vary, depends on how much you've contributed over the years. If you are only 18 when you become disabled, your amount will be significantly lower than if you were 50 or 60 when you became disabled. So the maximum you can receive for CPP disability is just over $1,200 a month. The average person receives $856. In addition to the, these amounts for the person who is disabled, the child can also receive some money. If you have a child, you can, that child can receive $228.66. This helps with basic child care needs, such as food and clothing. At regular CPP at retirement has a maximum of $1,000, just over $1,000. And again, this is completely dependent on your earnings. So as I mentioned earlier, this amount will be higher if you claimed CPP disability because your contributions would continue. And now old age security is also added in at retirement. The maximum amount for that is $546. But you can also receive the guaranteed income supplement um, and that uh, makes your income quite a bit higher. It's to help, your, help you reach above the minimum amount needed to survive. But for old age security and guaranteed income supplement, it does vary. So we'll go look at those the tables. Because um, it, it, it varies based on your spouse, their income, your income, and many other benefits. He 
here are the payment amounts that you can receive. So again, the average amount for old age security is $515, but the maximum is $546. The guaranteed income supplement for a single person is $500, but can go up to $740 for couples. Or that, or sorry, that is the maximum. Now, below is the table. This is the table if you have a spouse or common law partner. It is quite complicated, and I recommend contacting somebody at Service Canada if you do have questions about this. It discusses the allowance, and whether or not the spouse is an has an allowance. It, again, it, if your common, spouse or common law partner receives old age security pension as well, your amount is decreased. You would receive $316 as opposed to the $515 if you were alone. But combined, that means that your spouse is also receiving an amount. So your combined income is still higher. So again, I just discuss the allowance for a spouse. We've talked about this. The maximum for a spouse is just over $1,000. And the other benefit of receiving Canada Pension Plan, disability, or CPP at retirement is that there is a yearly cost of living increase. As we talked about, provincial disability benefits have not changed since 2001 and they do not change through the time that you receive it. With Canada Pension Plan, they calculate the cost of living and how much it's gone up and then increase the amount payable each year. So here's what happens when you age. CPP disability changes to CPP retirement. Provincial, with the provincial government, if you're receiving PWD, they expect you to change from PWD to old age security and the guaranteed income supplement once you become 65. You will no longer qualify for provincial disability benefits. There, are, there is a senior supplement that is available through the provincial government uh, when you turn 65, um, in, just in case your amount, again, if you were disabled, you weren't contributing. So you can receive a little bit more. Now, here's this is through the Ministry of Social Development. So as you can see, we'll look in the first column, that's for a single person, you receive the average, they use the average amount. So for example, if you receive $544 from old age security, $738.96 for a guaranteed income supplement, that's a total of $1,283. So there would be a senior supplement to help bring your income up a little higher to $49.30, giving your guaranteed total $1,333. And the allowance and GSR, as it says, they are reviewed uh, for adjustment quarterly. That's, in, again, cost of living, things like that or if your spouse's age changes. You can see all the amounts that you may earn. There are other options out there, and I uh, know many people with spinal cord injuries were involved in a car accident. That means your income would likely be through ICBC. So if you were in an accident, start talking to ICBC or a lawyer because ICBC will consider lost future wages and the cost of care going forward. Unfortunately, though, if you do receive a lump sum payment, it can affect your persons with disability benefits. You would, there would, there is often a deduction from your prevent, from your monthly payments once you receive a lump sum settlement from ICBC. A way to get around this is to look into trusts and depositing the money in a trust for your future care. With a trust, you are able to save a, set of, a certain amount of money, up to $200,000 a year, or up to $200,000 in total, without any deduction. Another excellent option is your long-term disability plan. Were you employed prior to becoming disabled? If you were working and worked generally for more than three to six months, you would have a long-term disability plan through your employer. That will cover your monthly your wage loss what are you losing in earnings each month and it is considered it is a they do calculate a percent of your earnings some policies have a cost of living increase but that is something that would be have been negotiated by your employer not something that can be changed following the injury long-term disability benefits can occasionally cover some costs of medical expenses 
particularly if it will help you return to the workforce in the future. They may cover treatments like physiotherapy or massage therapy if they feel it will help you become more active and productive. As with provincial disability benefits, long-term disability ends at age 65. Though in many policies, unless if the disability started less than one year prior to you turning 65, it will continue for a bit longer. If you were, for example, if you were disabled at age 64, if you had an accident at age 64, they would continue your benefits for one year after age 65. That is in most policies. That's not in all, but it is in many of them. WorkSafe BC also ends at age 65 because they are paying you wage loss. When you turn 65, they expect you would retire at that age, so you would no longer have any wages that would be lost. Though WorkSafe BC does have sometimes a lump sum payment for long-term care and pain if it is a prolonged injury, that is something to discuss with your caseworker. ICBC payments de completely depend on your settlement. That's something to discuss with your lawyer. Would you like to receive payments through your lifetime or would you prefer a lump sum now? That's something that you and your lawyer and ICBC can figure out. Just because you receive disability benefits, it doesn't mean you're not able to work a little bit. You can earn up to $800 a month without any deductions while you're receiving persons with disability benefits. You can earn up to $4,600 a year while you're receiving CPP disability. Those are ways to top up your income by doing what you're capable of, and it'll help you lead a little bit of a happier, healthy life. It helps you stay productive, but also will help you save. So there are forms of savings. You can save in an RRSP, but you can also save with an RDSP, which we've talked about in previous workshops. We've spoken about how a registered disability savings plan can help reduce any, by contributing, it can reduce the amount that they claim, say that you have earned. And if you, that you can place your, uh, any payments from ICBC into an RDSP, or you can also put it into a trust, as we said. But an RDSP also has government matching. It, government, the government will, all, will help match whatever you contribute up to a maximum amount, which we will discuss in the next in one of the next webinars. When some money is in a trust, like as I said, you can have up to two hundred thousand dollars, and then you can withdraw up to eight thousand dollars a year without any deductions to help cover expenses and costs. And if you are receiving persons with disability benefits, you can have assets up to five thousand dollars. That means just savings. That's how much you can have in a bank account. You can also own, have a home and a car, a car with a value of up to $10,000. With a home, there is no maximum. There are other ways to help you spend less money. And that by doing so, by saving these little bits here and there, you can put a little bit away for your future. So find some little ways to reduce costs. We're going to look at some of the other things the provincial government provides to you that can help you cut a few costs. So we talked before about the family bonus. This is one way that can help you reduce costs. It's through, it helps um, low income families, moderate to low income families with dependent children. It helps make it easier for kids. There is the Healthy Kids Program, which helps low income families with costs of dental care and prescriptions and eye work for children. There's a community assistance program. This can help with um, training and help you if you do want to get some jobs, but it also helps you with if you have a substance abuse problem. It helps you with literacy. There's a lot of different ways. Now, if you do, for some reason, have difficulty with your shelter, there is funding for um, emergency shelter and helping prevent you from becoming homeless, though I know there is still quite a significant shortage. As we mentioned before, there is the senior supplement. There is a special transportation subsidy. Here's a, quite a few more. So there are, if you don't have enough money to get an ID, that's there. There's security deposits for accommodations. 
if you want to do in a join a co housing co-op and you need to purchase this the uh, pay contribute to a share price that they can help you with that emergency moving diet assistance guide animals christmas supplement school startup camp fees crisis assistance medical transportation, if you need help getting to appointments, they can help you with that. So these are just a few ways that you can get, you know, just to save a little bit more. And again, we did, uh, we'll look at the next table that talks a little even more about the various supplements that you could receive. Here are some right tables for it. So you can get have a reduced cut fare bus pass. It's only $45 a year, which is much less than even a monthly amount for it. Get a Christmas supplement. You can get money for volunteering. You can have, and we talked about all of these, the bonus supplement. Dollars per calendar month just to help you and your family be a little more comfortable. There are costs, of, uh, there is coverage for funeral costs and other fees. If you have, have a guide dog, they will provide you with some money for that. That will help you feed your dog. If you have a child who's in school, there's some money for that. And we talked about the transportation subsidy. And there is that money to help get the forms completed. So there are ways that the government tries to help you, help, tries to help you live as an active lifestyle as possible, and helps you to be, save a little bit for the future. So this is only a brief look on the sources of income. So you can check out our database, at the Spinal Cord Injury BC database at sci-bc-database.ca. In particular, there is the funding category that discusses all of the potential funding sources in this province. You can also call InfoLine at 1-800-689-2477 and we can answer any questions you might have. So here is, this is also information about our peer program. If you're interested in joining our peer program, and getting more information, go to our website at sci-bc.ca slash we can help slash peer program. Thank you for joining our webinar series and please tune in for our next, our next presentation.